Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP. Today things are going to be a little different. That's good. That's really good. We're going to visit an absolutely awesome little farm. This is the Hoof GP guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It would be much appreciated. Cheers to that. In the meanwhile, let's get to Ben and Adam Spence's farm and see what the crack is down here. We're in Englandshire. Slight upgrade for today. This thing would tow the crush no problem. I don't see why Ashley or Mrs. HGP is so bothered. We could put a tow hitch on this no problem and tow the crush around the country. Maybe we'll do that. So this is North Yorkshire and North Yorkshire is absolutely beautiful. We're on our way to Ben and Adam Spence's farm where they milk about 80 cows. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be sexy little things because I've checked out their Instagram and they look good on there. These cows are outside right now, so they have pretty much a perfect environment. But the Spencers also look after them when they're inside by using easy fix products like mattresses and bendy cubicles and all that. So they're really, really comfortable. And I want to see how they go about looking after their eight cows, how they produce such amazing cheese as they do by the way, and what they're doing that's a little bit different to a lot of the farms that we visit. I think I'm at the right farm. So this is Ben. I've just met Ben for the first time and he did say he was a dairy farmer and now he's just explained that he only milks for half an hour to 40 minutes a day. And he's got 80 cows, I didn't assume he'd have a farmer if I fancy of this. So Ben is indeed milking 80 cows, 80 Frisian cows to be more precise, which aren't quite as big as Holstein cows, the ones you usually see on this channel. These cows do give a fantastic amount of milk and it's great quality. Talking to Ben about his ideas and plans for the future was really, really good and it's really interesting and inspiring to see somebody loving his job just as much as I do. So this is known as a rapid exit and it's called that because all the cows can walk in in one go and then the whole parlour lifts up in the air to let them away again. It's really really good because it means the cows aren't turning as many tight corners and that impacts on their feet massively. It really helps to reduce white line problems and it gets the cows milked much quicker. Ben and his wife Sam both lived very professional high-flying careers in Manchester and came back to Ben's family farm just a few years ago with big ideas. They've since built this new fantastic 12-a-side rapid exit parlour and a whole new setup to go with it. They're making cheese and milk and investing in the future. How good is this place? Properly impressed. Love it. With rubberized walkways and really well designed cattle handling facilities, the cows walk into the parlour at their own leisure and some even try to jump the queue. But Ben's not silly, the comfort isn't all about the cows. Like he doesn't just care about the cows, he cares about himself. <laughs> Quite right too. These girls don't look like they're in a hurry. It's so clear to me that Ben is really, really passionate about the comfort of his cows, the cleanliness of his parlour and the taste of his cheese. And we're going to go out later on to restock his milk bar, where you can buy an awesome milkshake. We're going to take a look at where he makes the cheese. And just like that, they're on the last side of milking and that is milking done for today. And for these girls, it's back to pasture. So it's a bit of a waiting game before they actually go back to the green, green grass. And as you can see, they're all just chilling out, enjoying the comfort. Recognise these? After the cows have had a chance to lounge in their beds, they head on out to the green, green grass of home. They strip graze at this farm, which means every day or so, Ben moves the fence further down the field so that they can get access to the green, fresh and lush grass. And as you can see, the cows know exactly what's waiting ahead of them. Now it's on to move and restock the milk bar. How cool is this? So this has been set up 
for his mobile shop is a milk bar and cheese outlet and it's awesome to convert it horse fox did you do all this yourself inside as well kitted it all out myself when it came it was literally just an empty shell so yeah built it all myself look at this how cool is this got all your syrup so you can make your own milkshake salted caramel chocolate raspberry yellow banana what other kind of bananas do you get i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you definitely wouldn't want a green one would you <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you better the toilet for a week. <laughs> what, so you just bring your own bottle or? You can buy the bottles here and then they're kind of yours. You okay. Clean them, then you bring them back, top them up at the machine. Oh, and you've oh, you got the bottles here? Yeah. Brilliant. And then awesome. Well, I'll let you move it. So the horse box moves around three different villages just now on different days of the week. So everybody knows the timetable, they know the scale, they know where to go, when to get their fresh milk and when they can get their cheese. A bit far for me to come, maybe he'll move it to Scotland. Once we've picked up the trailer, it's back to home farm to replenish the milk with the milk that we drew off this morning. Now that is what you call fresh. So that's us back at home farm to restock milk bar, cheese bar, horse box thing and get it back out to the customers. It really is such a slick little operation, although because of Covid, absolutely everything needs to be cleaned and recleaned before it goes back out. And that's us all loaded up, ready to move it down to the village. And this drop off point just so happens to be in the pub's car park, so you can tell the missus you're just off out for a couple of pints. Of milk, obviously. Chocolate. Oh, no. I used to do this for a living, I should really do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold it up, press your button for you. Ah, oh, okay. And that's already chilled, I take it? Yeah, that's already chilled. It, it, it lives inside the fridge, so. And this is pasteurised? So pasteurised, what pasteurising do? Basically to kill the bacteria that's in the milk. And in layman's terms, homogenisation is squishing the milk through a little thing to break up the fat particles. That's it, that's basically it, yeah. So that's why you don't get cream on top of your milk anymore. Okay, and then we just shake this up. Yep. It doesn't look chocolatey at all, look. But it really tastes chocolatey. Take that out, that's cool. Oh, that tastes bloody lovely. So we'll just leave it be now and head on up. And then we head on up to where the cheese is actually produced. This is a fresh virgin block of cheese. It's just been pressed yesterday by Ben, but it hasn't been aged. First, Ben needs to wrap it completely in gauze, coat it in butter, and then place it into cold storage to allow the mold and the rind to progress into what we now know to be the finished article. Oh, look at that! It smells good. Each wheel is five and a half kilos, so about 50 litres of milk in every every wheel of cheese. So that took 50 litres to make? Yeah. So next time you moan about cheese being expensive, that's why it's expensive. This is new, I take it? Yeah. So these are the oldest, they've been here the longest, so you can see the tags, it's 21st of April. So you don't move these? We turn them all by hand, because otherwise what you end up with is like a bell-shaped cheese. There is liquid in there, yep. so by turning them over, you keep that liquid moving consistently. The bandage comes off, so it's just literally a muslin cloth. Ben is so passionate, it's great being around him, hearing him talk about his cheese. He even let me cut this one open, and we had more than a little to try. Although somehow, I deleted the footage. <laughs> so there you go. Awesome, look at that! I didn't think I was getting a sticker. A dead cow, look. Terrible dairy farmer. <laughs> oh, no, she was sunbathing. It's charming. <laughs> Alright, love. Don't mind us. All the summer, uh, we graze them at grass and we just think it's nice to let them out, let them have some fresh air. The weather's often terrible, but when the weather's not terrible, we try and keep them out. Every farm needs to make their system work however it works. And for us, uh, grazing the grass works. And we've found particularly 
for the cheese side there's a lot of natural bacteria in grass so the cows sitting on the natural bacteria on the ground then bring that in and some of that makes its way into the milk which affects the flavour of the milk so when the cows turn out to grass our cheese will acidify half an hour three quarters an hour faster than it would over winter just because of the natural bacteria on the other wow so it does make a difference to the cheese they're sitting out here they're really comfortable the air is fine it's nice and light what are you doing to make them comfortable inside we decided when we built that shed that we were going to try and make them as comfortable as they could be while they were in. So we got the easy fix mattresses that you see, we've got cow brushes, um, there's a, a light ridge to try and let as much air in. You know, we tried to make it as comfortable as they could be while they were inside, you know, looking after our cows the best that we can. Have you got a plan? Have you got an aim? Yeah, short term, just to put as much of our own milk into our own products as we can, mainly through the cheese. You've been a pleasure, thank you. No problem, any time. It's really weird turning up and filming yourself and other people just for your pleasure. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers, guys. Goodbye. Have they all got names? Yeah. All right, love, how's it going? Big scary dairy cows, look at them.